Today, some 4,000 Americans across the country are working on a project known as the Clinch River Breeder Reactor Plant. The plant site is right here in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. You can see the Clinch River there at that bluff. The control room will be here where I'm standing. With the resolution of licensing, construction could begin on the nation's first large-scale demonstration breeder in 1981. The plant could start producing electricity in 1988. The 350 megawatts of electricity from the Clinch River plant will be transmitted along these power lines, bringing enough electricity to 200,000 homes in the Tennessee Valley Authority service area. We're not turning earth here yet, but we've come a long way since the inception of the project. This report focuses on that progress and why we call the breeder a step toward energy independence. In fact, 753 utilities from across the country have pledged $257 million to build and operate this plant because they believe the Clinch River Project is the next logical step the United States must take in order to have a commercially feasible breeder ready when America needs it. This venture remains the largest industry commitment ever made for a single research and development project. More than likely, a utility in your area belongs to the partnership of utilities known as the Breeder Reactor Corporation formed to support the project. That brings us to the question, what is a breeder? A breeder is a type of nuclear reactor that produces more fuel than it uses as it generates electricity. How does it do this? Well, it's not magic. The breeder uses plutonium-239 and uranium-238. Plutonium is the fissionable material. Fissionable means that it can split apart. Here, let me show you. When a neutron, it's an atom of plutonium-239, it splits apart and creates a lot of heat. The heat is used to boil water, to make steam, to produce electricity. Also, we get three new neutrons. Remember, we started with just one. Now we have three. One of these neutrons keeps our chain reaction going. The remaining two can be used with uranium-238, a fertile material. When an atom of uranium-238 absorbs one of these spare neutrons, it becomes plutonium-239. Now, if this is managed efficiently, you can get two new fuel atoms for every one fission. Perhaps the real story of the breeder begins here, what we call a vast storehouse of energy waiting to be tapped. What I'm leaning on is a canister of uranium hexafluoride. This depleted uranium left over from the nation's weapons program and the enrichment process used to make fuel for today's conventional light water reactors that now produce about 12% of the nation's energy. This uranium-238 is now being stored at three government reservations. Some 20,000 cylinders containing 280,000 tons of uranium. It is already mined and waiting to be used, without strip mining or otherwise disturbing the land. This existing stockpile of depleted uranium can't be used in today's reactors. They use enriched uranium-235. But in a breeder reactor, this leftover uranium-238 is equivalent to the estimated oil resources of the entire world. This source alone could provide our total electrical energy needs for several centuries. But there's more than that to the breeder story. If you take the uranium we know for sure is in the ground and utilize this in the breeder, the energy content would be larger than all of the world's supply of coal, oil, and gas. It's no wonder then that virtually every major industrial nation in the world is vigorously pushing ahead with their own breeders. Great Britain, France, Japan, Soviet Russia, and West Germany all have operating breeder reactors. Belgium, the Netherlands, Italy, and Luxembourg are taking part in breeder ventures. The French plan to have a commercial-sized breeder in operation by 1983. In all, there are nine breeder reactors now operating, four more under construction, and nine others planned. Of these 22 breeders, 
Soviet Russia, which is the largest oil producing nation in the world, accounts for five. They're planning for the future. All these nations realize the vast potential of the breeder and that time is running out on the age of cheap fossil fuels. Meanwhile, the United States has only one small electricity producing breeder. Utilities with long experience in nuclear energy see breeder reactors as the next generation of nuclear power plants. With light water reactors and then breeders, the U.S. could be assured of safe, clean, reliable, and economical nuclear power to meet the energy needs of this country well beyond the foreseeable future. Many people are not aware that the breeder concept dates back to the very beginning of the nuclear era. Nobel Prize winning physicist Enrico Fermi, who pioneered the development of nuclear energy, predicted in 1945 that the nation that develops the breeder reactor will have a great competitive advantage. That's because the breeder, in a core like this model, can extend the energy available from our present uranium resources from 50 or so years to hundreds of years. For a breeder can deliver 60 times as much electricity from uranium as conventional nuclear reactors. The U.S. has almost 35 years' experience in breeders. Clementine, an experimental reactor, began operation in 1946. The first nuclear power plant to produce electricity was a breeder. The four light bulbs you see glowing here were illuminated by breeder power back in 1951. The plant was called EBR-1, or Experimental Breeder Reactor No. 1. Its successor, EBR-2, began operating in 1963. It's in its 17th year of successful operation and is still producing electricity. This year in Richland, Washington, the Fast Flux Test Facility went into operation. This is the largest breeder test reactor in the world. This long experience underscores the fact that breeder technology is not new, but it does have to be demonstrated in a utility environment. This is why utilities from across the country, in partnership with the government, want to build and operate the Clinch River plant. Project Management Corporation General Manager, Mr. Bill Roth. Hello, Calvin. Hello, Bill. Bill, what does the plant hope to accomplish? Well, to answer that question, Calvin, let's take a look at history. The country was told repeatedly over the last 20 years that we were running out of low-cost oil supplies. Nothing was done about that problem in the terms of a technical fix, and now we must import oil. Three reports released early in 1980 stated that we were running out of low-cost uranium ore. One of these reports, the International Fuel Cycle Evaluation Conference report, indicated that the world was running out of low-cost uranium ore in the next 20 to 30 years. Now, as with the oil supply problem, we can't provide a technical fix to the projected nuclear fuel supply shortage instantaneously when it occurs. It will take time. Now, luckily, the pioneers of nuclear power knew that with breeders, we could use our uranium resources 50 to 70 times more effectively. That's 5,000 to 7,000 percent improvement in efficiency of ore utilization. Since the 1940s, the country has been engaged in an R&D program to develop the breeder. As with any good R&D program, what this one has had a focus on the end product, a plant to economically generate electrical energy and to breed fuel. Well, we're now at the stage in our R&D program where to make meaningful progress, we must put all the results of the development program together and use them to build and operate a demonstration plant. Now, this is not unlike uh, a simile that we could use with the airline industry. If the airline industry were always designing planes but never flying them, when it came time for the airline companies to buy the planes and people to fly them, they wouldn't because they were not demonstrated. We need to demonstrate the breeder technology with the Clinch River Breeder Reactor Project. The, the progress of the plant, how far along have you come? Calvin, since 1972, the project has come a long way. The research and development uh, for the project is about 90% complete. The uh, design is 80% complete. About $80 million worth of equipment has already been delivered. 
The value of major components and test items on order is over half a billion dollars. The total investment in the project by government and industry now stands at over $850 million. And you're building more components every day. That's right. Uh, the uh, project has now over $250 million worth of components completed uh, or in the fabrication pipeline. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. Now let's look at some specific examples of our progress in component procurement and fabrication. The $22.6 million reactor vessel for the Clinch River project was completed six months ahead of schedule and $2.7 million under estimated cost. Standing over five stories high and weighing 505 tons, the stainless steel vessel will contain the nuclear core that is the heart of the power plant. The three intermediate heat exchangers for the Clinch River project are nearing completion. All three are scheduled for shipment later this year. The three units will cost almost $40 million. The drive systems for the main sodium pumps have also moved along over the past year. The huge 45-ton drive motor is now in Oak Ridge. major components have also been delivered. These include components such as the protected water storage tank, the pump drive system, the heat exchanger guard vessels, the reactor guard vessel, the pump guard vessel, the in-vessel transfer machine, the plug drive and control system, and the primary sodium overflow vessel. Now, let's take a look at the Clinch River Project's technical merit. Over the past several years, Numerous independent studies have taken a close look at the Clinch River project. The latest is this report by the General Accounting Office. The studies have found that the Clinch River project is sound and up to date. Our engineers have incorporated the most advanced breeder technology available in the United States and abroad, and the design has been constantly updated to keep it at the forefront of breeder reactor plant development. example is its core design. A heterogeneous core design was adopted just last year. The design improves the breeding capability of the reactor. The design is evidence of U.S. leadership in breeder technology. Core designs based on alternate fuel cycles have also been developed. This means that the Clinch River Breeder Project could be utilized in the nation's ongoing liquid metal fast breeder reactor program as a test bed to examine proliferation, limiting concepts, and advanced fuel designs for future power plants. Multiplexing is another innovation. This modern data communication system has proven its reliability in the telephone, petrochemical, military, and aerospace industries. Multiplexing makes it possible for one cable to carry as many signals as are ordinarily carried by 8,000 cables. The system will save 1.6 million feet of cable in the plant and reduce costs. Safety has been a paramount consideration in the design of the Clinch River project. As part of the continuing work on safety assurance, a comprehensive integrated review of key plant systems began last April to examine the plant design in light of the lessons learned at Three Mile Island. The full-scale mock-up of the main control room for the Clinch River plant is now installed in a building near the project office headquarters in Oak Ridge. Engineers are presently employing the model to check out the man-machine interfaces to ensure that the operators can perform control plant procedures with optimum efficiency and effectiveness. Another model, some 1,000 miles away, is also playing an important role in the development of the Clinch River plant. Under direction of the project office, this scale model of the plant is being built at the Burns and Road facility in Oradell, New Jersey. This is one of over 300 modules under construction. The model is currently being used to establish final arrangements of piping and components to assure correct placements. The model will later be used to train employees in the operation of the plant. The fabrication of components, our advanced technology, the state of our readiness to address licensing issues, all indicate very clearly the accomplishments of the Clinch River project. But the payoff for the American consumer in terms of energy availability for the future is here. And here, where the plant to demonstrate the nation's breeder will be built. 
an important step on the road toward energy independence.